Hey everyone, it's Steve here with Class A Surfacing, and uh, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of demonstration per se. I'm going to be doing a lot of talking in the next couple of videos, and that talking is in reference to why so many different applications in 3D experience, and what are the differences between, let's say, as you see here under my favorite apps, I have Isom Design Experience, Isom Shape Design, Isom Shape Morphing, and then we get into the freestyle tools, then the generative shape design tools, several of those, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, why? What are the differences? Okay. And um, I think this will help a lot of people get a clear foundational understanding of what they are. And why they exist you know when you look at the isom like what are the differences and they are profound there are some very very big differences in some of these so uh, th that's basically the next couple of videos and then I'll get into some of the usage and some of the tools and you know, why and so on and so forth so for now we're gonna talk about isom what is the difference between isom design experience isom shape design and isom shape morphing now before we get into it if you would please if you like my content like the video and if you're not subscribed to my channel please it really helps me if you subscribe to my channel at least do that that really helps me out a lot and uh, motivates me to make more of this kind of content so right now what i have is the isom design experience you can see up here the application i'm in let me just get rid of that for now and under the isom design experience what we're looking at in this shell is in essence the old isom standalone tool remember years ago the cell systems bought isom okay and I was working there at that time, roughly around that time when that purchase was made. And so was taking those tools and porting them over into 3D Experience or into Katia. And one of those sets of tools, as you see here, was the ISOM Design Experience. Now, this, in essence, is taking the original ISOM tool, a separate program altogether, this completely different, this does not operate the same way that your common CATIA experience operates. Like if I click my middle mouse button and I try to move the part, you'll notice nothing moves, nothing goes. All right, I'll do it again. Click the first mouse button, the third mouse button, you know, I get the little menu that pops up now. If I hold the shift key on the keyboard, well, first mouse button allows me to rotate. Second one is my pan. And the third mouse button is my zoom and kind of rotate. That's how Isom Classic, as it's referred to, operates. So basically the Isom Classic tool has been ported over and brought into the 3D experience world. Okay, so now this is part of that 3D experience environment, that ISOM Classic, the one that's you know, designed so many beautiful cars and other things over the years, the true uh, Bezier, NURBS, we'll say Bezier, right? There's a difference, there's a differentiation, right? They like to make a distinct dis distinction between the two. Um, so this is the true Bezier tool. Okay, you'll notice I have this panel up here, display modes, and so on. This is straight out of my ISOM Classic. Right? I've got stuff up here, boundaries, and step mode, and so on and so forth, all sorts of other things. And I've got this up here. This is, you know, this allows me to manipulate my view. Notice the robot down in the corner is missing. And this, again, is for the person that was on the classic experience being brought into the 3D experience realm. So there's no need to translate data, export data out, or any of that other stuff. You can now build natively inside of 3D experience as if you were using the ISOM classic program, okay, the separate program. 
And notice there are some tools here that have been ported over from the Katia world and brought into my ISOM design experience. All right. That again is for the individual that is used to that original tool set, which is an incredible tool set, really good shaders, really good surfacer. It's really you know, obviously one of the ultimate surfacing tools for uh, forever for in the automotive surfacing world and other things that it's done as well, but primarily automotive. Now, when I go into my applications, I have isom shape design and isom shape morphing. And you'll see this type of thing over and over again throughout the 3D experience world. Okay. Now, isom shape design is the standard entry point into the isom shape tools as if they were embed or natural part of an extension of the Katia tool set. Okay. And then you have isom shape morphing, which is basically isom shape design on steroids, like pumped up extra tool sets. And you'll see the same thing with generative shape. Um, design, you have generative shape develop and generative shape morphing. These have all of these tools. Generative shape morphing has all these tools, but it has additional morphing tools wrapped up in it. Okay, so that is just the pattern. So whenever you see something like the design, that's your basic entry point into the tool set, and anytime you see the additional morphing, from at least the applications that I use, anytime you see that additional morphing, that means there are more of those tools. It's got everything in the original and then some. Okay, like the, in the old V5 days, the generative shape optimizer, if you had that floating license, you basically turn it on and you get all of the morphing tools available to you. Well, taking that floating license, turned it into an application. So now you have a whole separate application for that. And again, this is only available if you have the license available, okay, like all these other things. Now, if I go into Isom Shape Design, you're going to notice a lot of changes. Okay, those panels are gone. A little strip at the top is gone. I have my Isom tools down here. Okay, you'll notice some of my standard Katia tools are there as well. Now, if I go into Display, turn on my Action Pad, just drag this down a little bit just so you get an idea of what's there. Okay, these are my tools inside of my action pad. Right, a lot of them are ported over from here, right? Brought up, and give you another place. You know, the nice thing about the action pad is if I pull it off to the side, like you can't see it, but it's now off to the side. And this is how I work. I have a very large monitor, or if I have two screens, I just push this off to the side and I can have all of my commands that I use right here, right in one pad, which is really nice. Bring it back in for you to see. Now, when I switch over to Isom Shape Morphing, I get even more stuff, okay? There's a lot more tools available to me, okay? Now, if I take a look at uh, my surfacing, you'll notice that I have all sorts of additional tools that the standard tool set did not have. Now, the standard ISOM tool set is extremely remarkable. It's got an incredible wealth of tools in it. Right? And again, we'll talk about those tools a little bit later. Right now, I'm just explaining the differences between the applications. So that's why you see the three different ISOMs, ISOM design experience. And for most people, let's say you, for some reason, place that you work has that license. If you click on it and go to use it and try to get good at it, I'm telling you right now, it's a completely different experience within the 3D experience application than the other tools. These tools operate just as you would expect if you were using freestyle or generative shape design, so on and so forth. It's just that they have the ISOM tools available. Right, in order to get to G3 continuities and some of the uh, morphing tools or the, uh, the NURBS tools that have history and things of that nature, you have to have these licenses. Now, 
If we take a step over to freestyle shape analysis, for example, now this has, you know, I can create, there are my tools for creation of curves and extrusions and some blends and stuff like that. Here are my addition tools, basically edition, not addition, modifying things, analysis. So this is a light version of the freestyle tools. This is probably the, we'll call it the initial entry gateway to NURBS tools for all of the 3D experience tool sets. Now, if I go into freestyle shape design, let me get rid of that, just close it up. You'll notice I have more tools here. Okay, same thing, more addition tools, analysis tools, and so on and so forth. Okay, and again, these applications are based off of what licenses you have available. So if you're not seeing these, it's because you don't have those licenses available. Okay, and it's as simple as that. So from, from here on out, anytime that I go in and talk about isom, I'm gonna be referring to isom shape morphing. Okay, because that's the tool set or application that I'm gonna go into because it's going to have all of the tools that I use when I'm creating surfaces th through the isom tool set. If I have this, that means I already have that, right? Again, this is the entry point, and this is the one that's souped up. This has got, right, it's got the, the nitrous pumped up full of all sorts of interesting tools, right? This is your engine revving, and uh, gives you all sorts of neat other, th other things. Same thing with the freestyle shape design, and the same thing with the shape morphing. So you'll see me using those applications over the other ones because why would I bother going in here if I have everything and then some in this tool, okay? So that's why we have the different applications, it's different licensing, so on and so forth. That's primarily why all of those tools exist.